adaptive sports have come a long way since the first Paralympic Games in 1960. Wheelchair technology, televised events, and even giant corporations have played a major role in its growth. John Cousy joins us now with more on the world of adaptive sports. It was Disability Pride Month in July, and with the month coming to a close, it's important that we look at how far adaptive sports have come and how beneficial they are to the disabled community. To some, a disability may come at birth, but to others, it may come when you least expect it. However, having a disability doesn't mean your active life has to end. I've been an amputee since I was almost five years old. Um, didn't know adaptive sports existed back then. I'm from a small town in Indiana. I was hurt in a car accident when I was seven years old, and um, I became paralyzed from the waist down. At that time, I didn't know about adaptive sports. With little attention to adaptive sports in the early 2000s, some adaptive athletes played high school sports with non-disabled competitors. I was the only kid in a chair at my high school, um, so there was definitely, it was, this is back in like 1999, 2000, so there was definitely a lot of awareness that needed to be happening. One thing left out of the conversation was the different set of rules for wheelchair tennis players. Specifically, the two bounce rule, which helps wheelchair players get to the ball because they can't move laterally. A lot of the other coaches from other teams had no idea that this two bounce rule even existed. And I remember going to matches and the other coaches and other players asking, like, is this really fair that she gets two bounces? It was kind of like making some waves and having a lot of people ask questions. And, and they were wondering if, you know, if this is, if more people are going to start to do this. With the help of programs, like the one at the University of Arizona, more players have gotten in to adaptive athletics. My philosophy is that if you are a student with a disability and you come in my doors and say, uh, Pete, I want to play bocce ball or I want to do power soccer or I want to do swimming, it's my job to help you do that. The Wildcats have been one of the most predominant adaptive sports programs in the country since they began 44 years ago. And as technology evolved, so did the programs at Arizona. They now have eight programs and a fully adapted weight room for their athletes. Easy access and independent living is an important thing. That, you know, it's, uh, we don't want um, our athletes to come in here and have to use equipment that they have to wait for somebody else to help them use. Um, they got to come in here, they got to get their work done, they got to get out. One piece of technology that has helped grow adaptive sports are wheelchairs. Here you can see how I move in my personal wheelchair. And here I am in a sports wheelchair. As you can see, I am much more mobile. Technology is huge, especially when it comes to prosthetics, wheelchairs. I mean, when they started wheelchair basketball, everybody was using day chairs. Now we have specialized sports chairs that we use. Along with new and improved wheelchairs, social media caught on and has helped grow adaptive sports fans. The accessibility and awareness that we have to be able to see things and with our phones, just to be able to like record something and put it on, post it on the internet, people are aware, and it's it's super cool and. Because of that, our athletes are getting treated and making money that they should be deserving as of any other athlete without a disability. Even as adaptive sports started to bring in money and sponsors, the most important thing remains the benefit for adaptive athletes to stay active and healthy by playing. It's essential. I mean, the power of sport is a real thing. I believe in it 100%. There's a study that's out. His study showed wheelchair employment, uh, wheelchair users' employment level was 18%. And then you add education, it goes to 23. And then if you add education and sport, it goes to 54. With 13% of Arizona's population having some sort of disability, just know it is never too late to get started playing adaptive sports. From wheelchair basketball to wheelchair tennis, adaptive sports are growing. Athletes are getting sponsorship deals from corporations like Adidas, and less and less of the disabled community are choosing to watch from the sidelines. In the newsroom, John Cousy, Cronkite News.